Hey all you samurai out in the universe, I'm Dudes Dizden and I'm coming at you with another Samurai 8 chapter review. This time it's chapter 9 titled, Just the Two of Us. We can make it if we try, just the two of us, you and I. I couldn't help myself with that one. I <laughs> grew up with that old classic so man. But, you know, we actually get to see that Hachimaru is improving in his technique. His sword is still a little bit on the janky side, but he's actually able to cut fully through the robot after, like, what? few hours of practice at the very least I don't know if days have passed or whatever but he feels grateful and he feels that oh maybe it's because my faded princess is here or some BS like that I'm still I'm still salty about it I I'm a little bitch I'm sorry I'm sorry um but you know An continues to kind of ignore him she does enjoy his presence and the compliment he tried to give her but she's still just playing the hard to get role which i really don't understand why she's doing like what's the purpose of playing hard to get with this guy you don't even really know if unless that's exactly the problem but you'll, you'll never know unless you actually talk to each other although hachimaru does plenty of the talking all things considered but, you know, An starts to kind of roll around to Hachimaru. She starts to think that, well, she thinks back to Un's um, tutelage. And it's just like, well, with being around your faded samurai, you'll be able to sense the presence of locker balls and all that. Which I guess they need in order to create more samurai to bolster their defenses and stuff like that. I feel like I'm still not understanding something about the locker balls and all that good stuff. It's like locker balls -y. but you know, apparently it's very useful and you know multiple samurais can be created or something, so we'll have to see about how that goes. But and decides to actually go in, get close to uh, Hachimaru. Hachimaru thinks that, oh, okay, maybe she's come around, maybe she's actually ready to talk things out, but no, she actually wants him to shut up and help let her sense the locker balls, which, um, you know, both, um, Daruma as well as Hagamachi, Hagamichi, actually say, oh, well, you know, don't take it personally, Hachimaru, she's trying to sense nearby locker balls, that's what, that's Princess's whole purpose is, just, you know, bolstering the ranks of the samurai through finding the various locker balls, which, you know, Hachimaru was told by Dharma, but Hachimaru has a tendency not to listen to Dharma, but Dharma has a tendency to give long-winded explanations, so I'm not really surprised that he hasn't listened to everything that Dharma had to say. But, you know, Samurai, they actually go in deeper about the locker balls. You know, with that, we'll be able to bolster our military defenses for various planets and all that good stuff with the various locker balls and the Samurai, and we'll be able to, you know, you know, samurai risk their lives and all that good stuff, so there's always, you know, competing countries or other planets who are looking to kidnap princesses so that they can find more locker balls and all that good stuff, you know, and the better a princess that's on a planet, the better they're able to protect the planet, which, I don't know, I mean, it feels like a clear enough explanation, maybe I'm just expecting to fully grasp this right out the gate because it's just like it makes sense but you know after a certain point well what's the point of well i'm starting to go into the politics of warfare and why war exists as a whole which i don't feel like we're really going to get into that with this story so i'm just gonna shut up about this subject and move along all that matters is Hachimaru understands the purposes of princesses and we get to see that An has able to sense that there is a locker ball buried deep underneath the ground nearby so that's actually something to look forward to um, and while um, Hagamachi is you know ready to go out and go look for it Dharma is just like wait no it should be Hachimaru who goes with his faded princess and brings back the locker ball 
people from the planet's surface. That that's his whole purpose. That's his whole process. You know, Hachibar's like, wait, but I'm in the middle of training. It's just like, yeah, well, this is part of your training, dude. Protect your faded princess and find a locker ball to help gain more samurai to guard the planet. You know, this is how you will become stronger and better and all that good stuff. You know, even if she hates you, protecting a princess is a samurai's job. Which, you know, uh, Hachimaru starts to think back to his father. And just like, oh, well, her father constantly wanting to protect him. Even though he acted like, oh, I, I hate you, dad. Blah, blah, blah. Teenage rebellion and all that good stuff. You know, his dad still wanted to protect him. So he can at least understand that much. So he, he's... He's on the receiving end of that unreasonable angst and hatred. So they mount up and are ready to go. She and continues to kind of give Hachimaru the cold shoulder, which even in a situation like this, I don't understand. I think it's just because she's shy. I don't think she actually hate hates him. She just doesn't know how to actually communicate with him just yet and that's the biggest problem and I don't think there's any real animosity and she simply just asks that Hachimaru go slow from the get-go as they set out and while he does offer her his hand she just you know mounts up and it's ready to go but once they get into the sky and start doing that a whole new world bit and all that good stuff you know, she, her tune changes pretty quickly you know it's hard to kind of continue to be you know reserved and by yourself when you're flying through the air at several miles per hour with nothing to hold on to but the person that you're kind of shunning for the most part but you know Hagamichi is like uncertain if they'll actually manage to get along but Dharma feels like you know well they'll have to if they don't it'll spell the end of the galaxy which is just like Wait, why is all this being propped up on their shoulders? What what exactly is so special about Hachimaru? What's what's he got going on in him? Because it's really hard to tell. Because it's just like, well, all he got all these fancy kind of bio-engineered cyborg people running around. It's really kind of hard to tell. It's just like, well, are are you human? Are you not human? Is it okay that you're not human? Like, what constitutes a living being in this world? I'm very uncertain, but we have this nice little montage as, as An and Hachimaru go searching. He creates a shovel out of his, you know, sam armor, whatever, goop that comes off of Hayataro. Um, they dig the locker ball up, discover it, it's just like, all oh, good. And then they just kind of have a nice day on town, eat some ice cream, just sit down and enjoy a job well done for the most part. But, you know, An starts to actually take this time to try to get to know Hachimaru, because it's just like, well, you're fated to be with each other till damn near death do you part, so might as well actually get to know each other, but... You know, she asks him, it's just like, well, you just recently became a samurai, right? Um, and Hachimaru not really wanting to give the deets about the whole weird situation that went down as he became a samurai. You know, Anne really wants to know. It's just like, well, you stopped that robbery at the dojo, which, you know, and everybody's saying you're fairly strong. You know, you must come from a long line of warriors and stuff like So she's kind of starting to think that, oh, okay, he... You start to realize why she was being so distant because apparently Hachimaru's been built up to be this hot shit. The new hotness on the block for the most part. Like, oh man, you must have been always strong. You trained at this awesome dojo and all that. Not knowing that it's only because of his little friend that he actually managed to take down that tank from before. But... Hachimaru is really reluctant to reveal his true origins to Anne, which is just like, that's an immediate re red flag to me, like, dude, do not lie to this girl, do not lie to this girl, and unfortunately he immediately does, it's just like, well, I was always a lively kid, you know, I was always strong, my friends called me a prodigy, it's just like, wow, um, don't hurt yourself with all that shit you're spewing, bro, but... 
you know, An starts to kind of lament, it's just like, oh, well, you really have real talent, true talent, unlike me, you know, at least uh, my fated samurai is someone who is, you know, already somewhere high above me. That means, you know, I don't have to worry too much, or at least I have, I can, you know, rely on you a little bit more. So, and Hachimaru, I love that look that Hachimaru gives her. It's just like, uh, uh, like he immediately regrets lying because now he's seen it in a light that he wasn't ready for. But again, this is someone who's has very little contact with the outside world. I'm not really surprised he's lying. It's unfortunate that he did, I'm just not surprised. You know, because he's a kid. You know, kids do that kind of stuff, especially when they want to impress someone for the f most part. And that's really just all he wanted to do, impress on. So they get an order of takoyaki to go and for Mr. Hagamichi, and An properly, you know, gets ready to accept his help onto the Mount uh, Hayataro, and we finally have that bond finally, firmly established. Meanwhile, Atta, who <laughs> might as well be Raditz racing to the planet, you know, comes down onto the surface of the moon, which is weirdly close to the planet. I, I really have to point that out. That moon or whatever is stupid close to that planet and Ada lands on it and uh, and he, he just when he lands on the moon it creates this massive just impact like freaking just third impact just happened right there on the moon because it's this massive like city sized crater that he lands into and we soon see later in the next chapter that apparently he starts burrowing into the moon to come out on the other side like dude you could have just gone around asshole you didn't have to ruin a perfectly good moon like come on but he says that hey you know just wait I'm coming for you, Hachikaku. And I'm like, is this some is 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 this some Goku Kakarot shit going on here? Hachikaku? Cause he he was after Hachimaru, but Hachikaku, like who the fuck is Hachikaku? I'm I don't I don't know. I really don't know where we're going with this. Obviously, there's something special about Hachimaru. You know, there's something obviously going on here, but just, it's weird. It's very, very weird. I'm interested enough, but it just raises some eyebrows for the most part. But a fine chapter. I'm glad their relationship is actually starting to develop for the most part. It's a very Sakura, Naruto s relationship, but not with the deep animosity that Sakura seemed to have for Naruto for the most part, but well, it's good enough. A good enough chapter. But hey, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the progressing relationship between Hachimaru and Anne? How do you feel about Ata and his really immense power that really makes you wonder how anyone's gonna deal with this? Like, is Daruma gonna die in battle with Ata? I really, I really have to question that. And, you know, who is Hachimaru truly? What is his dad not telling him? Is this some kind of Astro Boy situation? I feel like it's an Astro Boy situation. But it's hard to tell because everyone is apparently a goddamn cyborg. Like, when you have no flesh and blood people around, apparently. Like, who's normal in this world? What constitutes normal in this world? I feel like I'm missing a few key elements here, as per usual with this series. Series, but hey, uh, I might just be an idiot. But again, tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, feel free to leave me a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave me a dislike and tell me what I did wrong in the comment section below so I might better myself for future videos. Subscribe and hit the bell icon, that way you never miss out on another Samurai 8 chapter review whenever I get those out. And if you want to find me on social media, just Google Do's Diz Din. I'm everywhere. For better or for worse. Usually for worse. Shield your eyes, children. 
And until the next video, just remember that if there's anything that's worth doing, sometimes it's best to do it together with someone you can trust. Don't destroy that trust by lying, though. That's a big no-no. I'm Dudes Dizdin, and I'm going to bed. Bye-bye.